AI is search, but worse. All right, I plan on reading this blog post and uh, kind of reacting to it, giving my thoughts on it and stuff. Um, it's written by, as you can see, Sarah.engineer. I can't believe engineer is a valid top level domain. That's wild. You might know her if you're familiar with my channel as Bad Cop or Bash Cop. She is the creator of the Bash Stack, of course, friend of the channel, uh, Bad Cop over here. But yeah, let's go ahead and read this blog post, AI is search, but worse. Just po published uh, at the time of this recording a couple days ago, so that's pretty cool. Let's see, she says, I'm sure you've heard this phrase from somebody by now. I've pretty much replaced search with chat GPT. And of course, a little asterisk here, you know, a claw, deep seek, or some LLM that pretends to be Danny DeVito. Yeah, so basically any sort of LLM, like I've replaced search with this LLM. Yeah, that makes sense. In this post, I'll tell you why that person is wrong and stupid and dumb. Sorry in advance if that person was you. So. I already like this blog post. The reason I like this blog post is because it, because it comes out swinging. I actually appreciate that. Um, on my channel, as you know, like when I make videos, I do try to come at you with like information first and then baked in it, you can get my opinion and my bias. I'm very open about it. I love this because this makes the bias very clear. We're opening with the bias. You're not reading this blog post like, oh, is this person pro this? Is this person against this? I don't know. They're already calling it worse and they basically just come right out they're coming right out here and saying this person's wrong and stupid. Honestly, I appreciate that because now I know what I'm getting into. I know where this person is with their bias when it comes to this sort of stuff. So let's keep reading. But first, what is quote search? If you're new to the internet, welcome. For the rest of you, you probably already have some concept concept of what search means. That said, I was struggling to put that concept into words, so this will have to do. <laughs> I like this Google screenshot of what is search in internet terms with the I'm feeling lucky button. Oh man, all right, let's go. That was the first definition I found paragraph. Oh, sorry. This was the first definition I found paraphrased. Search refers to the process of using a search engine to find information, web pages, or data on the internet. Cool. That sounds nice, but we can do a little bit of algebra to simplify it. Data is just information. Web pages mostly just contain information. It's not specific to search engines anymore. So we're left with search is the process of finding information. Okay. Yeah. Like I'm totally cool with that definition. I think that makes sense here. Um, Maybe she'll get to it. I haven't actually read this blog post yet, but like, I like this concept of search being like active. I'm not passively waiting for information to come to me. I'm not scrolling on like my for you page or something. I'm searching. I have an intent. I have an active intent. Like I am, at, I am in control here. I am actively trying to find something. What that something is doesn't really matter. But the point is like, I am trying to find something. I'm not waiting for information to come to me. Let's see. So search is the process of finding information. But is this really accurate? If the goal was just to find any information, then I would say LLMs are equally useful to search engines. They both provide lots of information quickly when given a query. So let's make our definition slightly more specific. Okay, we're still talking about the definition of search. Search is the process of finding good information. Okay, that's interesting. Obviously, this raises the question, what makes information good? So she's going in this exact order. This is awesome. What makes information good? The answer to this question will vary from case to case, but typically I find that information is good when it is factual. Subjective information has its uses too, but I would estimate at least 80% of my searches are to find facts. This is interesting. I, I can agree with this. Um, I definitely think there's some nuance. You could tease it out here because when you start talking about factual, we have to start talking about like fictional and nonfiction. So like an example would be like, if I were to go to Google and I were to type in like, how do I make a bet? Like, okay, might talk about having to make a mattress, what goes into making a mattress, a bed frame and stuff like this. If I were playing Minecraft, how to make a bed is, you know, taking like three planks and three wool and putting them in your crafting table. If someone, if I went up to someone and said, hey, how do I make a bed? And I was at a mattress store and they were like, oh yeah, three wood planks and three wool. What they said is right, it's factual if it's contextualized in the world of Minecraft, in the world of like real life. So we have like fiction, non-fiction, Minecraft being fictional, real life being non-fictional. Obviously we can blur the lines and stuff. You get like sci-fi in here. But my point is like, I can agree with this definition because factual doesn't actually tell me if it's fiction or nonfiction. It just means that it's accurate for however it's being contextualized. So that makes sense to me. That makes perfect sense here. Particularly as a programmer, I'm often trying to find information about how to make the computer do a thing or why the computer has done a thing. And these tend to be the objective type of information. That makes sense. So in the sense here, um, the way she's using like objective and subjective is like, in this case, we're talking about computers. There's some sort of binary system. They did something or they didn't do something. They were correct or there was a bug. So you're trying to find some bit of information, something where there's not going to be competing outlooks on there. There's going to be a correct and an incorrect answer. So yeah, this makes sense so far. On the off chance I do want to search for a subjective information, LLMs are probably the wrong place to look. They don't think, so they can't form opinions, so you probably don't want to replace that aspect of search with LLMs anyways, I hope. 
Okay. I, I, I would personally want some more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I would want to dive into this a little bit more. I can see the next sentences with that out of the way. Let's focus on the process of finding facts for this blog post. She's focused on the process of finding facts. That makes sense. Sort of saying like, here's what it looks like with subjective. And we're just kind of pushing that out for the sake of the blog, for the sake of the blog post, for the sake of the blog post. That's totally fine. Like, Hey, we're not going to focus on this. I would personally find this interesting. Like I would definitely want to dive into this. If I'm looking for something subjective, what can a large language model and autocomplete on steroids actually give me as an answer? Like, I think there's interest interesting things there the same way that like terry davis with temple os found that random number generators can make interesting songs um yeah i, I definitely think there's something there but for the sake of this blog post this doesn't seem to be relevant so let's move on the process of using an llm versus search engine is very similar one you input a query two you read some statements on the screen three you decide whether those statements are true or false. If the process is the same, what makes LLM so much worse for finding facts? This is cool, I like this, because obviously if you're gonna search something, you input your query. Like I said above, this is an active thing that you are a participant in, so you start it. You, the person behind the keyboard, the person who's typing into this search engine, you are the one making the choice here, you input the query, then you get information back, you read that information, and then three is really important here. You run it through some process in your brain. Whether you're aware of this or not, this is where your biases might come into play if you're not explicitly aware of how your brain works, but you're filtering them. You're assigning weights to them based on a whole slew of information. You're deciding like information comes in. You're like, how relevant is this? How much do I think this is correct? You could be wrong. Obviously scientific method here. We got to actually form hypotheses and test certain things that come up, but like intuitively you're going to start weighting different information, judging the source, looking at the search results. Like you've probably done this a million times. So you've gotten kind of used to it, maybe on a subconscious level, maybe you've thought about it explicitly, maybe you haven't, but like subconsciously the gears are turning. So that's pretty cool. LLMs remove metadata. This is an interesting subtitle here. I want to read about this. The problem with using LLMs for search is that you are presented with a statement and you have to decide right then and there chat. Is this true? Okay. That's cute. Grok, is this true? Um, yeah, this is, this is interesting. I have a lot of thoughts here. I want to read on before I go through these thoughts. With a search engine, you actually have lots of additional metadata that you can factor into this decision. How reputable is this website? Does the author of the statement seem confident? Is the information old, possibly out of date? Has the information been disputed? Does another search result corroborate the statement? This is what I was saying. Oh, wow. Yeah, perfect. This is exactly what I was saying. When you like go to Google, for instance, or any search engine, you have different results. You have dates with them. You have maybe a stack overflow from 2012 versus stack overflow from 2022. Your brain is already doing work here that you might not be aware of. Um, so yeah, this, this seems like I can kind of see where this is going based on the title of LLM for moving metadata, but let's read on. Cause this is, I like, I like this. This is interesting. Depending on the website, you may even have additional pieces of information. Did a lot of people upvote this information? Uh, sorry, this statement. Yeah. So like a stack overflow is like an example, obviously Reddit, of course. Are there replies calling this statement incorrect? Does the author of the statement have a really dumb avatar? Okay, like, I mean, sadly, yes. Like, the same way that they say, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, hold on. Author probably hired an artist to specifically try and make a good cover for this. I won't judge the book solely based on its cover, but that gets factored into it. So like the avatar does for right or wrong. Like that is something you use. That's one of the millions of data points that go into your brain when you make a decision on this stuff. So that's, that's interesting. All of this valuable information is stripped away and obfuscated by LLMs, leaving you with no option, but to trust that the machine, which is incapable of thought knows best. This, I mean this, yeah, this is perfectly stated. I love this because I, I talk about this on my channel. Sometimes when I teach certain aspects of something, I will repeat information multiple times. And the reason I'm doing that, and some people even comment, like, you know, you don't need to repeat it like this. Like, we're not dumb. I don't think you guys are dumb. I'm giving it to you in a way that I believe the human brain works. I believe that I'm talking to humans and repeating information. Our brains are so good at pattern recognition that when I start repeating something, you can hammer in information really quickly. The third time I repeat the same sentence, you're not even listening to the words I'm saying. You're just hammering in that pattern. You don't need to listen to the words I'm saying because you get the gist of what I'm saying. You don't have to focus on my specific words. You know, based on everything else that I'm repeating the same thing. I think that's a really powerful thing in teaching. And we get to see this when we use like search engines. This kind of does get stripped away with any sort of LLM. To put this a different way, I want you, like if I'm making a video for someone, I want you to digest the information. I can give you the information, you digest it. If I go to a search engine, I want it to give me the information, I'll digest it, meaning turn it into something that I can understand. When I go to an LLM, it's giving me a pre-digested version. And I think on some subconscious level, I don't like that. I also don't trust that. Like I'm inherently skeptical of that. Skepticism is good here, but I would rather just get the raw information and let my brain do what I've 
practice doing, which is practicing search. Um, so yeah, let's let's go on here. Oh, wow, well, it's the end, okay. Separating fact from fiction. Even with search engines, this part is hard. The goal of finding facts on the internet is challenging and a noble pursuit. However, I believe it's a skill that can be practiced and trained. Yes, perfect, I mean, this, is, this is what I was saying. This is awesome. Um, it is a skill. It's something you have to be an active participant in. You don't wanna sit there and have your For You page feed you information. I mean, okay, contextualize this. If you're laying on the couch and you wanna scroll through your FYP, hey man, that's totally cool. I get you, I, I get that. That's, so, that's how people find my content, I think it's awesome. If you're trying to solve a problem, you want to be the active participant in it. You want to be the one who knows how to search for things. When I make my videos, I show how I go through man pages, how I pull up POSIX specifications. We don't have to sit here and wonder what's right and what's wrong. We can go to the documentation. It's not me versus you. It's me and you understanding reality. Me and you unearthing what is true, what is objective, what is right. Um, so yeah, it, it's definitely a skill. It's definitely something you can practice. You can learn. You can get good at. Like, you should. It's amazing. It's it's uh, it's such a fun exercise for your brain to take in new information and digest it. Don't deprive your brain of that fun exercise, <laughs> like puzzle solving, that kind of a thing. With LLMs, there's nothing to improve upon. Sure, you could try appending, quote, no lies and, quote, engage maximum truth mode to the end of your prompt, but it leaves you in the same situation regardless. That's interesting. Um... I would actually ask her for clarification on specifically what she means here. Uh, my takeaway, I think, is that I can improve this skill. I can maybe start engineering my prompts a little bit, but I can also have an LLM engineer my prompts. It could do that behind the scenes without even me knowing it. So at a certain point, how much of this is a skill for me to leverage? Like, Because there are people out there that say AI is a skill you should learn, you should leverage, and AI will also become so good that it won't need the human. So like, which one is it? I feel like it's probably this one going to become this one over some amount of time. That's how people view it. They think eventually we'll get there, whether that's in the next two months, some people say, or that's in the next 20 years, or we never get there. I don't know. I can't read the future. Um, but I think that's what she's saying here in this blog post is I can't improve on this. I can start maybe writing a little bit better prompts and maybe clearing up the way that I think, but why not just go to a search engine? Why not just start getting the the information directly from its sources having instead of having to go through some sort of thing that pre it for me that I can't really inspect how it's working. I can get down with that. For now, I'm going to stick to search engines, and I think you should too. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the conclusion of the blog post right here. I would have to agree with that. The only downside is, and I'm sure she's probably experiencing this, but like, probably if you are in my audience and you use search engines as well, it seems like they're getting worse, man. Like, I know they're shoving more LLM features and AI summaries in there. I'm not even talking about those. I have a video where I complain about those. I can link that at the end here. Um, but I'm not even talking about those, okay? I'm just talking about, like, the search engine just feels like it's going downhill. Like, 10, 15 years ago, I used to go on Google and quote certain things and put a minus sign in front of them and put a plus sign here and then cite colon that. I can still do a lot of that stuff, but it doesn't feel as powerful as it used to. Sometimes it feels like it gives me results that aren't quite what I want. You ever go to YouTube and search for something and the first 15 results are relevant and then the 16th result is just something from your subscriber feed? It's like, okay. Like, I go to search to find things. Search is different than my For You page, YouTube. Like, my For You page, my Discover page, shows me things that I would want to watch. I don't want 15 results into my search page. Here's something you might want to watch. I haven't forgotten that I'm searching things. My attention span is not that shot, okay? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think reading through this blog post, I can see it was kind of, uh, it seems like it was written a little bit out of frustration, obviously. There's a little bit of uh, negative language here and stuff. Like if I were to say Grok analyzed the uh, theme behind this, I'd probably notice that. I'm joking. But like, I get it. So yeah, that's AI as search, but worse. Obviously, you can see this is kind of like an opinion piece. It's not diving into like too many specific examples or showing like LLMs versus search engines. This is more like just sort of a look at them almost philosophically, but I would just say sort of in the abstract talking about what one does versus what the other does. And yeah, I, I, I mean, I worry about this. Like I've talked about it before on my channel, but like the usage of LLMs scare me. I mean, for a lot of reasons, we can talk about the ethical use of generative AI. We can talk about copyright law. We can talk about all that stuff. But besides that, it just like, if you know me and you watch my content, I don't use autocomplete in my, my editor for programming. I don't use like language servers. Like I don't like that. I like to think of the syntax. I, I like to program and write exactly what I need to be. I, I would get distracted by something like that. So LLMs take what I already don't do like autocomplete and bring it to the complete next level. And I see people use them and they just become reliant on them. 
I understand that technology progresses. Like, you know, we used to have horse-drawn buggies and now we have cars. I'm not in my horse-drawn buggy complaining about how fast cars are going. That's what it could seem like. But I'm just worried that we're losing some fundamental skill. It seems like how your brain works and processes of information is important and it's something to exercise. I'm worried about the cognitive de decline that could happen by increased use of LLMs. There's some science on it. Obviously, we're not gonna know until time goes on. This is all just a feeling I have, but yeah. So there's my biases. Like I said, I like to give you the information first, my bias at the end. I'm, a, I'm highly skeptical of it. I'm a skeptical person about a lot of things. I like to see the facts first and I'm just worried about LLM usage. On a personal level, like it's, the, the idea of it's really cool. I love the idea that I could feed a giant piece of documentation to an LLM and have it spit out things based on that. I think that's really cool. I'm not, I'm a programmer. I'm not afraid of, afraid of algorithms. Um, yeah, I just worry about the ethical sourcing of material using to train AIs. And on top of that, people relying on them and letting their brains atrophy. I worry about those two things. Um, so yeah, that's all I got. See ya.